Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4 says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Hi, my name is Charles Vance. I'm along with Chief Strategist Terry Saka, and you are watching The Wealth Transfer. Terry, good to see you today. Hey, good evening, Charles, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to The Wealth Transfer. And uh, the diligent in this particular case, as we want to uh, focus on, is diligence in information. Because remember, this is global economics, biblical principles to protect and preserve your family's wealth. Why? Quality of living, be able to help one another, and through that, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. So diligent is in information here. Terry, I want to real quickly uh, introduce ourselves to people who might be watching the program for the first time. My name is Charles Vance. Uh, I'm a been a pastor, a senior pastor of a church in Barbersville, West Virginia. Most people probably don't have a clue where that is, uh, but I've been here for pa just past 20 years. Um, you, on the other hand, and I'm very interested in the world economics. Uh, <laughs> is, I've learned some things financially that has caused me to be very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, I live in, at this current time, in the poorest, the second poorest state in the Union per capita and have proven with a church full of people that you don't have to be poor mm -hmm. even though you're living in the midst of poverty. Uh, we've had several millionaires that have come out of our church mm -hmm. uh, that has been birthed actually in our church, I should say. Now, you uh, are a born-again, spirit-filled mm -hmm. child of God. And uh, I love Very that. profound yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you also own a company called Cornerstone Asset Metals. You deal with silver, gold, precious metals. How did you get there? Well, I got there through financial advisory. Uh, I was actually, I was actually even way back when I was young, I, I actually was like I call the bagel boy in a brokerage firm where I kind of did errands. And I wanted to be in financial advisory, but I really didn't like what, how they pigeonhole people into certain things. I'm like, oh no, this isn't good. So I went about other things, did construction, uh, had a construction business similar like you had for a while. Uh, and then, um, I decided to go back in and I said, no, no, no. If I could work for someone who will let me put people in things that are right and not because they wanted to do it, then I'm in. And so I did get a job with AG Edwards. Uh, they, they trained me extremely well. Uh, I'm an accredited asset management specialist. I, have, uh, I was a financial advisor, so I had Series 7, 63, 5, Series 3 in commodities. Uh, I was involved in estate planning and trusts. Uh, but even then, I realized real quick that the systems of the world is so pigeonholed, I just couldn't go there. And when we saw the collapse coming, I got more into the commodity angle of things, and now I actually am nothing but pure, real, physical refining and minting of precious metal because it, I, I know now it is the only thing that is real and tangible. And oddly enough, has gone up more in buying power in the last 10 years than anything else, especially the dollar. Well, we just started talking last week about quantitative easing. Yes. Most people do not have a clue what that even means. It feels like a government term mm -hmm. uh, that has been dreamt up. But it just simply means that somebody's printing a bunch of money and putting it into the world's financial system. Yeah, and, and we really know, what we do know in America is this, that we have been in a certain monetary system for now 40 some years, right? Since, uh, basically since 71. So uh, where is that now? Almost, well, more than that. Now, now, so. now that's when they quit using gold or silver. When they quit using the gold, yes. Standard and to back our currency. Yes, and right. I tell you, We've really been kind of duped in this. Um, it, it's been our nations, we've been mismanaging our money pretty much since the get-go. The Great Depression was a complete malfunction in mismanagement of our money. And the only reason we got out of the Great Depression, by the way, wasn't the president doing the great deal that everyone talks about, the Social Security, all these programs. That's ridiculous, although that helped. It was because 1934 rolled around and all the Europeans were shipping gold to America to hide from Hitler, because you remember Hitler was 33. So all that gold started coming back to America and we were rejuvenated as a nation creating wealth, which we then inherited 70% of the world's gold at the time. Strong economic power saved us. So our banking system in America was actually holding that physical gold at yes, the time. Yes, our banking system 
owned 70% of the world's gold. Wow. Money was based on gold. So the 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 currency yes. was actually based at that time, what's called U.S. currency, which is the, the Federal Reserve That's banking right. system. It's yes. not the U.S. government. Yeah. Uh, but it was actually based on gold, on, on us having a pot full of gold. Yes, and so if we talk about QE, what we're doing is we're going in four quick stages. Stage one, Great Depression, money, gold was one to one. So for those that even know what a gold coin, old gold coin is, it was a $20 gold piece. $20 gold piece was $20, one to one, it was equal. Then we blew that, came out of the Great Depression. People remember gold was pegged at $35 an ounce. We've lost almost 100% of our buying power at that time. Because remember, it did buy you $20 of goods. Now it takes 35 for the same thing. So we already had serious so, inflation. So, so I want people to understand this. They, because of the inflate, because of them starting to print money, yes. uh, it actually took 35 paper dollars for the same one ounce to, of gold to buy the the, the uh, twenty dollar gold piece. Yes, that's so, right. So they started just cutting. Yes, there was too much of the currency printed. That's right. Okay, and then then it happened again, which we call Bretton Woods, and it was a fifty dollar gold piece. Now it was forty to one against the ratio. Mm -hmm. So we got duped again in our valuation. Now, the, the French caught on to this in the late 60s, started saying, hey, I don't want this, this currency anymore because you're printing this dollar for free, getting free loans. I want my gold back because this is losing money. I want the gold. So we started shipping gold back to Europe in the late 60s, and, and that's where we got in trouble. We were shipping so much gold. We redeemed some 12,000 tons of gold at the time, but wow. it was getting so severe that I know Nixon knew, they knew at the time, they said it was temporary, and we even had the video one time show him saying it, they knew it was never temporary. We were gonna be found out as a default and fraud if we did not get off the gold standard. So we went off the gold standard in 1971 and went on what we call the US dollar standard. Now we've been on this paper currency fiat standard without gold for 40 plus years, um, and all through history, if you just go back, it always ends. Every fiat goes to zero. But now we've started the cycle of quantitative easing, which is nothing more than quantities of these to ease the financial burdens of recessions that they've been managing for the last 40 years or so. What has turned out to be, though, but since that's, then... That's not really... It's not doing that, though, No, it? it's... Well, no, it's not, but it's kicking the can pretty good. Yeah. And so what we started out doing in the early 70s we had 300 billion of these in circulation. Now we have over 18 trillion is printed obligation, debt that we have right now. So we're in trouble. People say, hey, so what? We're still functioning, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. And back then you used to pay 20, 25 cents for a gallon of gas. Now you're paying $4. I've had other people say, yeah, but we're making more money. Okay, if you do the equation of how much you're making to what goods and services cost you, you're definitely not doing it. And here's the great example, Charles. In the 70s, a woman can stay home, take care of the family, which is a wonderful, dynamic, and honorable job, which got totally blown out by feminism, uh, which amazes me because I think a, a mother is just an incredible, incredible uh, president, CEO, and general all at the same time. But we've gone from a, a, a woman being able to stay home with the family, having a house, a man going to work, and being able to afford it, have a car, and pay for college. All by, kids can even pay for college, and it was no big deal. Today, both parents have to work. College costs you unbelievable debt to your 30 or 40 years old. We can't even barely sustain the same standard of living. That is inflation. That is quantitative easing over time. But what we've done in the last five years, we have printed trillions, over four trillion just on the books, and there's more in swaps, mm -hmm. trillions in five years. It's going to come home to roost, and it's going to impact your retirement account. It's going to impact your IRA your 401k, your cash savings, CDs, money markets, your inheritance that's coming. For those that have IRAs in these retirement accounts, for the longer term, if you stay in this currency, the fact is in the last 10 years, this has lost 
you can roll over those IRAs, retirement number accounts, store cash, and hard tangible assets in a vault. And then by doing that, of course, you then have value. And remember, money is a storage of value over time because as the currency's lost 40%, this has gone up 500. So remember, 100,000 is only 60,000 today. Today, 100,000 10 years ago is now a half a million. Over time, it's just gonna to continue to get better. So for those that have assets to protect, IRAs, we'll send out this package. Give us a call, register on the website. This package is loaded with economic data to help you make that decision, to guide you to be properly diversified and teach you what's coming in the, in the future for the dollar and why how, and how simply you can roll over your current IRA into a precious metals IRA so you can store your hard-earned wealth in a tangible asset and not a paper currency because this quantitative easing started in the set, well, started all the way, but 70s to now is getting ready to come home. And the well, argument it's is- It's still going on. It, it's still, yeah. They're still doing there's it. Still, Every month, I there, think, there's money being Yeah, printed. like 40 or 50 billion a month, yes. But you it's say crazy. that like, yeah, yeah, like 40 or 50 billion I a month. I know, Charles. What, what's, what's the... Uh, I know. I mean, I mean, the billionaires of the, the world, the, yeah. the, 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 the most wealthy billionaires are only somewhere up around $60 billion, aren't they? Oh, no. No? More than that? Yeah. There's people very wealthy. They're not over $100 billion, are they? Um, well, it depends on how you want to say it, public people, private people, but there's private families worth, yeah, like probably a trillion, but they're, you know. But, but that's few and far between. <coughs> my, yeah. My point is. They're the elitists. The, the, yeah, the few <coughs> billionaires, the individuals that we see all yeah. around us. Yeah, because uh, I think uh, the, I think what Gates or them, they're about 50 billion here, yeah. 50, 60 so billion. My here. point is, is they're printing what this man has been worth with a company, yeah. multiple companies, and investment for years, and what we think is something extraordinary that he accomplished, they're printing that in a month. They're printing it, it but you know, yes, and what, what, I'm, what it's gonna tell you is, it's going to come home. And when I say that, there, you cannot do this without a consequence. Now they're making it sound like it's no big deal. Oh, everything's going to be fine, but I'm here to tell you, global economics, History has always shown this, 100% of the time, these will go to zero. There will be a consequence when this currency comes in, it's called hot money, the velocity of money, money. I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> funny? The velocity will be so ferocious, they think they're gonna contain it. I'm telling you, when this thing plays out, you're going to have a very depleted savings balance because as we showed last week, Europe is announcing a drastic round of money printing. And, and people, if you only knew Greece and Italy and Spain, they keep saying that, oh, they've solved that problem. All they did was create a new bond out of thin air to buy the bonds of these countries out of thin air. And the people buying those bonds have been a lot of American banks and who's buying our bonds happens to be the European Union Central Bank. It's all fake buying, fake buying, fake. So. All I'm saying is there's a rooster coming to crow here soon. I don't want to run way off track, but I, I want to mention this because I feel like it's really important. Your company deals strictly with uh, genuine money or gold, silver, yeah. that, that is actually, if you, if you do this in an IRA for someone, if you transfer their mm -hmm. uh, IRA or 401k into a hard uh, precious metal uh, IRA, there's actually physical silver and gold that is in a yeah. vault. As a matter of fact, third party yeah, vault. the image is yeah. in the bottom left of the screen there, but that we actually meant the highest purity coin, uh, the government standard for IRA. But, and but, but it, what I wanted to mention and is- And it's real. <laughs> yeah, this is real. But there, it goes into a vault for you. Exactly. Store, and it's, it's managed by a custodian because it's a retirement account. Not so managed has, by you. No, I can't. I mean, just uh, we just provide the materials. We are in refining and minting of the product, so we got the highest purity standard. But the, it's in a retirement account for you, but the nice part is it's there in the vault in your name. 
Anytime you want to take it out, you can take it home and you just pay the tax on it like you would any retirement account. So it's a, that's very valuable because it's real, not paper. Now, here's what I wanted to mention, or I want to, I want to ask you about it. Mm -hmm. You told me that there are some folks that are selling silver and gold as if they had it in their vaults, but they actually don't have it. Elaborate oh, on that a little bit. I know, this is so insane. The market system actually sells gold and silver. You're now, talking about the stock market. Yeah, and the stock market, and I would say even the futures market without getting, the futures market, which is supposed to be the physical market, where if you buy a futures contract, you can get silver and gold delivered. That's what it's supposed to be. By the way, I, we don't have anything to do with that. It's, it's insanity. We are strictly with refining. So we get it right from the guys who get it from the ground, okay? But in the futures market, they have sold, and I say they, the banks, large traders, it's all coordinated. It's manipulated, so don't get me wrong. Gold and silver prices are manipulated right now. Fine, so what? It will come to roost. It, it has to. All through history, it always has. But right now, currently, they have sold 160 ounces of silver for every one ounce in the vault for delivery. Think about that. 160 they sold and they only have one to deliver. There's going to come a, a reckoning, okay? Now, all it would take would be the people that have purchased this paper to come to this, whoever it is selling, whether it's a <clears throat> bank or whether it's a, a, a stock company, uh, a company that has yeah. stock. <clears throat> all they'd have to do is if everybody came at one time and demanded it, yeah. it, it would be it would like collapse. the run on the banks yeah. that happened in the Great Depression and, that's and, not and, gonna, and, the and they're not going to deliver it. Savings they, and it, loan crisis. Yeah, if that happened, it just wouldn't matter because they would well, tell you. Well, it's not there. They're, yeah, they're just going to tell you, sorry, you're just going to have to take cash. So that's my point yeah. is people need to understand that there is some of this stuff mm -hmm. going on that's extremely deceptive. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's never going to really change. And, you know, most people don't understand this. And so... It's not like this is something that everyone's doing. You, even though you see a lot of commercials, a lot of people are not doing this. And it's a very, very small fraction of the population who actually stores intangible hard assets. Most people are in paper. They're, they're very, very deceived through the education system. Uh, so it's, you know, know that. But when they're selling 160 ounces on paper for every one real ounce, that's being minted. Now, who's who's given them the privilege to do that? Is the government doing oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Give them the permission to do it, sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's just all part of keeping the deception mm -hmm. of the true value. We keep the deception away. If we can keep them people confused, and remember, who keeps people confused? Demons. Oh, well, let me better not say that word. Um, Devils? Go, go ahead, that's fine. It's true. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, there's actually a demon of confusion that is phenomenal sure. when you see it come out. But spirits, evil Luciferians, are about deception, confusion. Remember, denomination means, you know, division. So the, the Satan knew what he was doing, right, when he's doing this. So if people could be confused on information, not quite get how radical Europe is collapsing, how the West is in debt. Matter of fact, we are in more debt now than any country in the history of the world has been. And they keep saying, oh, we're going to be the strong superpower for decades to come. I love my country, but I love the people, not the government per se. It's not about government because government is us, supposed to be. But it's about the people. It's about the children. It's about your neighbors. It's about us having a quality of life that we were groomed to understand. So all I know is you're not going to have it. Matter of fact, you're already seeing it. I know, my, I, almost everybody I know is feeling it. I can't believe my grocery bills. I can't believe college costs. You know, I have a, a college-age daughter. I cannot believe the cost of goods, services, automobiles, you name it. Come on. If you're storing your hard-earned retirement wealth for the future, when you see the level of quantitative easing, and we're going to get in this next segment here on this chart, we'll spend a minute, long time on it, your retirement accounts, your IRAs, 401ks, all are in jeopardy of its buying power. So if you think things are expensive now, wait until this money printing comes to a reckoning, which it's coming. We're still in the heat of economic trouble. The, 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 the media is not very honest about how they're portraying it. So just know for those that have hard tangible assets, 
What God gave us, remember Haggai 2.8, the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Those in land, oil, gas, things that are real, things that are tangible. If you would have been owning this your whole life with hard-earned money, $100,000 10 years ago in this is worth a half a million today. It's not changing because, number one, the, the supply is dwindling. But more importantly, they keep printing this money. This is what quantitative easing comes in. So for those that have IRAs, 401ks, retirement accounts, cash, money markets, and you want to be properly diversified, which I highly recommend, register on this website, give us a call. We'll send out this package that is loaded with economic data and information on, on future projections of things that the dollar has to, dollar facing and how easily it is to roll over to a precious metals IRA so you can store your future in God's money, constitutional money, because remember, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, Congress shall have, um, Congress shall have the right to, to print money or, or coin money. Remember the money when the Constitution was written, defined by Noah Webster, gold and silver, never paper. So keep that in mind. Sir, so you brought some charts with you this week, or a chart with you. Yeah, this is you, incredible. That, that you want to show the folks that are watching. Yeah, because this is the quantitative easing. And this chart we're going to go into, um, I'm going to explain it real quick, and then we'll go in. Now, there's four sections here, and this is only QE3, by the way. We've, we're in our fourth one, but this is up to QE3. What it's going to show you is QE1, 2, and then we have something called Operation Twist, and then QE3. What it's going to show you is what it, the level of money printing and then what happened when we ended the QE1 when they thought it was going to do another thing. So we'll go over the chart, but I want you to see what we're doing here is we were printing a bunch of money. We started QE1, we're saying we're going to print $700 billion and add it to the economy. And then when we do that, the economy is going to get better and we're going to, everything's going to be okay. And then you're going to see a line drip to the right that's because not only did it not get better, it got really bad. So they had to come up with another idea. And then they said, this is going to work, and when it gets done, uh, we'll be all set. And then you'll see that it drips to the right, meaning it got worse. So like, uh-oh, we got to do something else. This time it's going to work. And then we're on the, now we're on QE3. This time it's going to work. We're, we're taking away the money. We're used to do $80 billion a month. Now we're only doing $50 billion a month. Don't worry about it. Things are really looking good. The economy's looking good. I'm here to tell you what goes up must come down, and you're going to see it do the same thing. It's just a matter of time. So let's go to the image number five. This is known as the history of underestimating QE. Is this time really going to be any different? So first go to the left there. You see that's 2007. We had the economic collapse in 2008. And the first gray area there, you see the spike. That's our major first money printing we did. Then we came across. That was QE1 where we did about $700 billion or so. Then you notice at the end of that gray area, the first green square. All of a sudden, failed projection post-QE exit strategy, everything collapsed. We said, uh-oh, things aren't getting any better. We're in a lot of trouble. Bam, the second gray area called QE2. They, they started printing money again. It went back up. Then you see the gray or the green square there. This is when they ended QE2 saying, okay, everything's going to be better now. And then bam, look at the line to the right. It failed again. That was the exit strategy. Then they said, uh-oh, this isn't good. We need to print some more money. Now, if you notice, the, the lines on the left, or the numbers on the left there, that's how many trillions of dollars we were printing, by the way. And then they said, uh-oh, we've got to do something else. They went into this Operation Twist. As you see, again, it failed again, went to the right. Then you see the dramatic QE3, which we're talking about now. We started printing $80 billion a month, and they say now they're in the exit strategy. Now, if you notice, we went... There on the right side there went straight up to the right corner. That's QE3. It's what we've been doing for about a year, year and a half, printing all this money. Up in the very right corner, you see that little square. That is their current projection of tapering this money printing we've been talking about, now at $50 billion instead of 80, And they're going to hopefully taper this by the end of 2014. I'm here to tell you, though, all these other projections were wrong. As you see, they fell off to the right. 
Now you could take that off and let me just show you this. That was a phenomenal illustration of money printing every phase we've been in and how drastically it failed. Now we're up to four, four and a half trillion dollars of printed currency in the last five years. And they say this time though, it's going to work. The economy's getting better. And I'm here to tell you, it's not, the numbers aren't real. And if it was, now granted, we're all different between Europe and America, but if it was, why in the Wall Street Journal article we showed you last week, did they say they're going to do a drastic money printing stimulus in Europe again? I'm telling you this, this money printing we're doing here, this QE, yes, they're pulling off because it wasn't doing anything. I'm merely saying soon they're going to have to do something again, but they're going to have to wait. They've got to save the gunpowder, I guess you could say. Well, it, it looks, according to the chart, it just looks like things are continuing to get worse and they're putting more money in the system, which is uh, diluting our currency, which yes. is causing things to cost more. You mentioned last week eggs. You must eat a lot of eggs to know the cost of eggs. I yeah, absolutely buy, do, yeah. I, I just buy a dozen every now and then. Yeah. But the, uh, we know everything is yes. continuing to increase uh, in, in cost. Yes. But yet our, it doesn't seem like in the last five years that we've kept pace with our pay raises. Or Matter of fact, the it's income. even worse because a lot of people got hours cut. They're down to part time. Mm -hmm. And we have less participation in our workforce. So this QE is so real. It's going through phases and it's taking time, but don't underestimate its impact on your future, your retirement account, your IRA, 401k, your inheritance, cash in the bank. So many people store a lot of currency in CDs and banks. Number one, if you knew the bank rules, if you don't, when you register for information on our website, mention bank rules in the comments and we'll send you a bankroll DVD. You better know what the law says about banking. You're an unsecured creditor. That money's not yours anymore. It's a loan to the bank. Your IRAs, your long-term, your hard-earned money is in jeopardy of buying power. So what we're merely saying is be properly diversified and protected because if you're not, how are we in the body of Christ going to be here for one another to spread the gospel, to, to spread wealth to our children and heritage to our children's children? I really encourage you, for those that have IRAs want to roll over into a hard, tangible asset IRA, register on our website, give us a call. This package is loaded with information on economic data, what the dollar faces, and how simply it is to roll over that IRA. And remember, next week we're going to continue to show you images of our debt to GDP and how this impacts your buying. And if you haven't made Jesus Christ the center of your life, ask Him into your heart. He'll come. The truth will set you free. God bless you tonight. You can watch these programs on demand at cornerstoneassetsmetal.com. It's on your screen there. Tell somebody about the broadcast. We'll see you next week right here for The Wealth Transfer.